Hi, so I saw this video on Stand Up Maths about a very famous math puzzle, which they call the almost impossible chessboard puzzle. So the scenario of the puzzle is that two people are presented with a uh, chessboard covered with coins that are either heads up or tails up. And the players have to apply an algorithm to the pattern of heads up and tails up on the chessboard to choose a certain spot on the chessboard. And the object of the puzzle is to devise an algorithm that will always get you the correct spot 100% of the time. So definitely check out the video. It's great. There is a link in the description of this video. So they go over the math behind the solution uh, in a lot of detail. And what I think is really cool is that they also show them working out an example, a random example, to show that the algorithm works in that case. Like they mentioned in the video, usually a mathematician would just prove that the algorithm works and not actually try it out. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I think it works well. It proves that the algorithm is simple enough that a human can do it. You know, they fast forward through it, but you can tell it only takes a couple of minutes and they're only writing down a couple of numbers and the rest they're doing in their head. I think that it does help a bit that they are mathematicians. I mean, certainly the algorithm is simple enough that anybody could do it. But if you are familiar with modular arithmetic and binary encoding, I would say that it's a little easier because you don't have to memorize any patterns. The patterns involved are ones you're already familiar with from when you learn those topics. So I thought it would be possible to make an algorithm that would be just as simple for somebody who doesn't have that mathematical background. And that's what I came up with here. So again, I highly recommend watching the Stand Up Maths video first if you don't already know the solution, because I am not going to be getting into the math behind why the solution works. I'm just presenting a solution that's equivalent to theirs. And at any rate, there is a spoiler alert because I will be jumping right into the solution right after I've gone through the scenario. Okay, so here's the scenario. You have two players working together. Player two leaves the room and player one is presented with an eight by eight chessboard of 64 coins that are heads up or tails up. There is a great treasure hidden underneath one of the coins and player one is shown its location, okay? Player one then gets to look at the chessboard and point to one of the coins on it, and that coin is then flipped. Then player one exits the room and player two enters the room. Player two is not shown the location of the treasure, but they get one chance to guess it. And all they have to go on is the pattern of heads and tails on the board after player one has flipped one of them. Okay, so remember, the players had no control over how the board started, and player two has no idea which coin player one flipped. So it seems like there's very little communication between them. And the algorithm has to work no matter how the board starts out and no matter where the treasure is. It seems impossible, and it is in fact quite hard, um, but it is possible. Okay, so in both players' cases, the algorithm, the main purpose of the algorithm is given the pattern on the board to choose a coin. Player one is choosing which coin to flip, player two is choosing which coin they hope has the treasure. And their algorithms are quite similar to each other, but player two's is slightly simpler, so let's start with that. All right, here's the algorithm for player two. This algorithm works best if you're allowed to set up a second chessboard that's a copy of the one you're working with and flip the coins on that one to manipulate them. You have a copy of the board. Divide the board in half, either top and bottom or left and right, and count the heads in the right or bottom half of the board. Um, then if the number of heads is even, remove the right or bottom half, and if it's odd, you remove the left or top half. So either way, you're gonna remove half the coins off the board. Um, as you do this, for every heads up coin in the removed half, you flip the corresponding coin in the remaining half. So if you're taking it off the top, you're gonna to be flipping coins on the bottom, and if you're taking it off the right, you're gonna be flipping coins on the left. So once you're done with that, you'll have half the coins on the board, and then you repeat the process over and over again until you get down to just a single coin on the board, and that coin will be the location of the treasure. If you don't have a second board you can set up, you might have to draw it out on paper, something like that. But let's try it out. Here is step two for reference. So at each step, you start by dividing the board in half. So you can choose left and right, I'll choose top and bottom. 
Now count the heads in the either right or bottom half. So 4, 5, 7, 14, 15. So now depending on whether there's an odd or even number of heads, you remove one or the other half of the, of the coins. 15 is odd, so we will be removing the top half. Take that off. Uh, as we do that, whenever we get to a heads, uh, we as we take it off, we are going to flip the coin in the it's in the same place in the bottom half. Okay, so tails we just take off. Uh, we get to a head, we remove the head and flip the coin that's in the same place in the bottom half. Okay, that was the fourth place here, fourth place here. All right, remove the tails, uh, take off a head and flip this coin. Tails just come right off. Okay, so these two heads correspond to these two in the bottom half. So when we take these off, we'll flip these two. Tails gets removed. Heads and flip. Heads and flip. And these four tails. Okay, so that's one iteration. And now we repeat the process. This time I will divide the board into left and right halves. So when you do that, you count the heads in the right half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is even, so for even, we will be removing the bottom or right half. And as we do, whenever we get to a heads, we will flip the corresponding coin in the left half. So tails, heads, heads, heads means flip, flip, flip. Tails, 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 heads. Okay, now I have to do it four more times, uh, but each time it gets a little smaller. There are four heads in the bottom half, uh, and if it's even, then we remove the bottom half. And I'm just gonna go ahead and flip the ones that are heads in the top half. Okay. There are two heads in the right half, that's even, so we will Remove these and flip the ones that correspond to heads. All right? Zero heads, zero is even, so we remove the bottom half and there's no heads there, so we don't do any flips. And then we're down to just two coins left, and so one of them is the left half and one of them is the right half. The right half contains one head, one is odd, so we Keep that side and remove the left side and according to the algorithm uh, when we remove this one we flip this one it doesn't matter what the last coin comes out to it, it could be heads or tails but that is the location of the treasure okay that's player two's algorithm what about player one uh, player one is very similar player one knows where the treasure is so all i have to do is start by flipping that coin on their copy of the board and then proceeding just as player two would who's looking for the treasure. Uh, player one will get down to a single coin, and this is the coin that they should flip. So if this is the board that player one sees, and this is the location of the treasure, then player one would start by flipping this coin, and then they act just as if they were player two and were presented with this board. They'll get down to a single coin at the end, um, and if they were player two, they would say that's where the treasure is. Player one says, that's the coin that I'll flip. Okay, so that's about as simple as it gets. But it does rely on you having this set of coins that you can set up and manipulate yourself. Uh, what if you didn't have that? What if you wanted to solve it just in your head or using your fingers? So you can do that in this case. It's another extra step. And you, what you will be doing is solving for the column and row separately. Uh, count the heads in each column starting from the left, counting the treasure as an additional heads if you're player one. So we need to count the number of heads in each column. So the first column has four heads. The second column has five heads because we count the treasure as an additional heads. Five, five. Okay, four, five, 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 two, three, two, six. Now, construct a row with one coin for each column. Tails for an even total, heads for an odd total. Okay, so we need a eight by one, just a single row. Okay, the first one will be a tails because four is even. The second one will be heads because five is odd. Uh, 
one. And then 2, 3, 2, 6 is even, odd, even, even. Okay. Reduce to a single coin as in the main algorithm. This is the column to select. Okay, so as before the main algorithm, we divide it into left and right. One head's on the right, so we keep the right half. Flip those three. Two heads on the right, we remove the right half. One head's on the right, we keep the right half. Okay, so this is saying that we will select the sixth column. So we know that in the case of the first player, one of these coins is going to be the one we select. All right, and now we just need to repeat the same process on the rows, starting from the top. Okay, so this process would work well if you had eight coins, but I think you can also do it pretty easily, uh, counting on eight fingers. So let me show you what that would look like. Okay, I think this might work. So I will be putting my fingers out, and I will put it above the desk for heads and below the desk for tails. So I need to repeat the process on the rows, starting from the top. So the first row on the top has three heads, and three is odd, so that's a heads. Uh, the second row has four, that's even, so that goes below. The third row has six, that's even. Fourth row has three, that's odd. Oh, the fifth row, this is where the treasure was, so I need to remember when I get to that one to count it. So the fifth row has five, so that's odd. Three is odd, four is even, four is even. Okay, so I've got heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 tails, tails. So now I need to reduce this. Remove the right and flip these two, remove these, flip this one. So that means we want to select from the third row. Okay, so in this case, uh, we selected the sixth column and the third row. So we want to select this coin as the one to be flipped for player two. Okay, now let's try it out. I will take the role of player one and then I will get a special guest to join me as player two. So I will generate a random board and I will roll some dice to determine the location of the treasure. All right, fourth column, third row. So that will be the location of the treasure. Okay, so now as player one, I will determine which coin to flip, and then I'll pass it off to player two. And I'll, I'm not gonna try to go as fast as possible, but I will just have a timer running just to see how long it takes. Okay, let's see. All right, first column is odd, second column is odd, even, even. So we've got heads, 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 tails, tails. Keep that one. Okay, so second column. And now let's do the rows. Okay, so heads, tails, 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 heads. Keep the right half and this one. Okay, so eighth row. So second column, eighth row. Um, so that'll be the one we flip. And we'll unmark the treasure and flip that coin. Okay, so now we'll get player two. All right, so joining us as player two is my wife, Mary. And so Mary, do you know what modular arithmetic is? No. And do you know what five is in binary? I do not. Okay. Great, perfect, you're just the person we need for this. Okay, so we have practiced this a few times and you are familiar with the algorithm and so I will leave and work, you work out where you think the treasure is and uh, we won't make you do it with your fingers, just do it on the screen. It's more dramatic for them to see which coins you're flipping over because they know where the treasure is. Sounds good. Okay, and we'll have a timer going, but take your time and uh, let me know when you're done. Great. Okay, so I'm going to count the heads in the bottom half. 16, 17, 18. Okay, so that is an even number. So I'm going to flip the coins in the top left that are the same place as heads in the bottom right. Okay, so I'm going to flip that one, that one. 
Okay, I think that's all of them. Whoops, get rid of these. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing again. So there are five smiley faces in the bottom row, which is odd. So I'm gonna flip the coins on the bottom right. They're at the same place as heads in the top left. Okay, so, and then remove the top left half. Okay, same thing, so four. So I'm gonna flip the coins in the top left that are the same place as the bottom right smiley faces. Then remove the bottom right. Okay, two, so it's even. And the bottom right there is Uh, okay, I think I'm done. Cool. Uh, so that's the location of the treasure you picked? I believe so. Okay, great. So which column is it starting from the left? It's the fourth column. And the row starting from the top? It should be the third row. Okay, so four and three. So let's see if that is where the treasure is. All right. Yay. Great. Well right. done. Thank you. Okay, cool. So um, that's it. Uh, thank you for joining me, Mary. My pleasure. And thank you for watching.